Welcome to the Holly Area Community Show. I'm Jody, brought to you by Reach, and we I am with someone by the name of Jim Bortnam. And this is a man that's been doing some very interesting things for the past couple years at a very interesting place called the Garrick Theater. So welcome to the show. Thank you. There are many people that are curious about just what you're doing in here, um, why you're doing it, and, uh, and the future for the Garrick Theater. So. I know that I have many fond memories just coming in here, even though it looks very different. It's like, oh, the times that were spent when my family came to movies here, junior high, when you couldn't drive, you could go to the, the theater and your parents could pick you up nice and safe. And then, of course, high school when, you know, a lot of kids have a lot of <laughs> high school memories here. So thank you so much for the work yep. you're doing. Um, but what do you know about the history of the Garrick Theater? Not near as much as some of the local people, other than the people that drop in and talk to me on a regular basis. Um, we believe it was built about 1911, our guess is. It's been uh, remodeled a couple times. Uh, I have a picture that um, Phyllis Grable found for me of originally what the building looked like. It did not have the marquee on the forward. It was just doors in the front but nothing of the inside. So it was a very simple building yes. originally? Yes. Okay. Because, yeah, the turn of the century maybe, because what I remember was more of a, an Art Deco sort of look? or It was more Art Deco, and I think the stage was used somewhat then, and then the movies came in, and it was a, a smaller screen. Later on, it looked like it was remodeled into a larger screen. Okay. And something else has changed just by looking at how this construction is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll say that. Other than that, what I've learned is like just people stopping, and most everybody that stops in has got some kind of memory. I bet, yeah. Some story to go with it, yes. Yeah, yep. yeah it's a great place, and I'm so glad you're taking the time to refurbish it. What, what caused you to want to buy the building, and when did you buy the building? I think about eight years ago, and at that time the city was going to tear it down. We were short of parking lots in town, of course, <laughs> and they wanted to make it a parking lot. And I own, have bought and remodeled, or refurbished several old buildings in Fargo, okay. and this kind of really caught my eye. We've got to do something with it. Got to do something with it. Mm -hmm. uh, this, we talked back and forth, and we come to agreement with the city that they would sell it to me for a dollar if I'd put a roof on it, so the building would be saved. Okay. And uh, so that's what you did first. Is yes. You put the roof on it. So we did a lot of structure inside because a lot of the structure was actually rotted away from the damage inside. We replaced a lot of roof structure, put a new roof on it, and then I had to go to work and continue to make a living. Yeah. And that was fine until last year or so. Now I have the time, and it's more like a hobby, and it's fun to do it, and we just went to work on it about middle last summer. Yeah, and I, um, I've i seen a couple guys that you're working with. Is that your crew, about three of you? or Most of the time it's two of us. Two of you, okay. It's, uh, Rick Hill and I. Mm -hmm. And Rick and I have worked and sailed together for many, many years. And it's just, for us, it's a hobby, fun to do. And if we feel like not working, we don't work. Oh, that's the way to Drink do it. Drink a lot of coffee. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And I want to keep it fun. Right. Yes. So. Yeah. And, and <laughs> well, and for some reason, it's hearkening back memories of the Yumcomst. <laughs> you know, when I was at the potato warehouse, yes. and there's this yes. guy, you know, just having fun, yep. doing something he loved to do, and that's what it's reminding me of. So that's just a beautiful thing. And now when summer, when it's warmer, now we're having people drop in. Sure. When it's cold, nobody was, not a lot, which is fine. Yeah. But now we probably, most days we get somebody and sometimes two and three people stop in. Oh, so it's kind of a social yep. event too. Yep. And it, it does, there's a lot of community spirit involved in this project, I'm sure, because like you said, there's so many fond memories yes. about it. Now, I believe the, the theater was closed in the 80s. Is that right? Or I'm not sure, but there's a lot of paper, <coughs> a lot of paperwork left here in the office. And it looks like very late 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. there might have been something still going on, but just okay. barely at that time. Sure. Only because we look at, I don't remember myself, but you're right. I think about the late 80s. I think it was the 80s, yeah. yeah. It was closed for a while. Then I think a gentleman by the name of Floberg ran it for a while. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it closed up. Oh, that's right. It had closed? Yes. Because I remember that period of time being disappointed. And then they reopened it. Yes. I think you're, you're right. And yep. I remember that. 
Well, wonderful. So that's a little bit about the history. We're going to take a little break and talk about maybe the future of the Garrick Theater, the future of Jim Bortnam, <laughs> and, <laughs> and other things. So we'll be right back. And we're back with Jim Bortnam at the Garrick Theater, at least what I remember to be the Garrick Theater, but it looks very different, and it will be looking different as time goes on. So wh what do you see happening in, in the future? If we recognize as we work, our plans change probably other, every other day, mm -hmm. but our general idea is we, we've got the original doors, we're restoring those, they'll go back on the theater, uh, there'll be a new marquee, not like the original, but a little more attractive so you can recognize it. Mm -hmm. Our goal is so when you walk in the front door, you see the old theater, the way it looks like when you come through the, the, the doors, in the second set of doors you see there, at that point I want you to be able to see this, the seats on either side so it looks like the old theater until you mm -hmm. come through the door. Okay. And then when you get through the door, then it's going to be the modern that we're going to make. Not modern, it'll be Art Deco theme, but it'll be uh, not theater seating, but it'll be tiered seating with chairs and possibly tables or regular seating where you'd like to make it into. Okay, so point. you're you're thinking about a different concept because yes. your plan is not to have a screen and having a movie theater, right? I wouldn't say that. Okay. That potential's there if we can restore the equipment to do that, but initially we'll have video projection. Mm. And we'd, we'd like to have that and, and a very good sound system so you can use it for entertainment purposes, receptions, any kind of activity you'd like to do it, but a, a versatile system that can do multiple things with it. So like a multi-purpose yes. center, yes. which would be wonderful for the community. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> and so you're saying you, you want to keep have it in keeping of this, the Art Deco style from before, but you are to retrofit it to what you need, you're going yes. to have to make it a, a lot more modern actually. And I want the front part to be when you walk in, you still got the memories of the old theater mm -hmm. as you come into it. Wow, so what kind of work goes into this? What, how, uh, <laughs> you've been here a lot I know lately because I'll see your truck, yeah. but um, how often do you come? What are your plans when the weather gets nice? We worked all winter, uh, no heat. We got heat now and we don't need it. But, uh, which is fine, we work probably half days, two thirds days, when we felt like. Now we'll probably work for the next month, and then we'll probably not do much for the summer. Uh, we've got some things we want to complete on the outside this summer, so next winter we can just work on the inside. Gotcha, okay, yes. now will this be in time for the all school reunion next summer? I, if, if it isn't all the details, it'll be usable, yes. Oh, that but, would be I mean, fantastic. We may have some fine things we haven't figured out what to do in some sense. And, and the, the, the upstairs, which was an apartment, because of the damage, is the ceiling and everything came down. So we aren't even going to touch that till later. Okay. But the stage will be done, the interior will be done. Uh, essentially, we're trying to do some negotiating people and figure out how to do it, a place where caterers can serve food. Okay, which would be wonderful. Yep. To, but the food would have to be brought in. You don't have plans I, I, to have I, a kitchen or nope, anything no like that. No kitchen and no liquor license. So gotcha. it would have to be done. That would have to be negotiated on a, on a per use basis, sure. I guess you'd say. So, and that's our plan, and that may all change. Yeah, well, that's, that's the best way to do things is set your sights, set your intention, yeah. but be flexible enough for it to yeah. change so that it fits. But I know, I mean, many people are excited, and I'm so glad to hear that you're having a good time with it. Yep. Otherwise, as you said, what's the point? So oh. I know a lot of people really appreciate it as well because of the, the warm memories and it would be great to have more of those memories for the future. I think we're going to try, we'll see how it works here, but probably after the floods are all done and into May, April, May sometime, we're probably just going to have kind of an open house and let people wander through. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's great. You'll have to let us know when that is. And we plan on coming back and look at the progress maybe closer to the fall. So I, I thank you so much yep. um, for coming to the show. Until next time.